Uh, is this your live? Hello. <laughs> Hi, Luis. <Hello. laughs> How are you? Uh, actually, like I wanted to tell you, I I have here an Egyptian tea coming from Cairo. Like one year ago, I'm drinking a, oh, oh a my. hibiscus. So you have a coffee now, right? Yeah, I have a, like a, a Nescafe coffee. It's also very Egyptian. Yeah. Yeah. Which co which coffee? Ah, Nescafe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You find it everywhere yes. there. Hi, Luis. How are you? How are you? How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, we have nice weather up here in the mountains of the Sierra Nevada in Spain, so everything fine. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, uh, it must be. It's, it's soon. It's gonna be hot eh? uh, in there, right? Yeah, sure, sure. In the summer, it might reach like 40 degrees Celsius, and even more in the summer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. This is why also, as I was saying to you, like I would like to one day have a car and find and come come there. But uh, yeah, I'm still have to save some money. But uh, it's coming. I, I have it here. I have it in the back of my mind to come to come to you very very soon. Okay. Uh, you bring your surfboard as well. Eh? My but there is no surf in there, is it? Oh, you have some big waves, yeah. yeah. Nah, I don't really. I never heard about yeah. that. Really? Yeah. Okay. My kids have two little uh, uh, body boards. Ah, bo yeah. okay. But they do windsurf probably, right? Or? Yeah, I think they did it in France as well. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah, amazing. But, uh, Luis, so I would like to introduce you first. And, um, yes. And then uh, maybe perhaps. So, so the, the <laughs> it's funny. So let, let's go actually back. Uh, so one year ago, I started this channel, and without any like intention to like be a big channel, you know, I just wanted to, um, because in the university, uh, the teacher I had, in, the professor I had of history of architecture, they the first thing they said and the first lesson was like, we're not gonna touch Egypt ever. We're gonna start with the Greeks because the Egyptian never did anything sophisticated enough. So and so then, <laughs> so like what ten years later? I don't know. Ten years after I started the Egyptian feeling here, I wanted because I needed to study architecture of ancient Egypt. I wanted, and uh, so researching the topics and blah blah blah. I found out the Uncharted X uh, uh, episode on the Hawara labyrinth, and then I found yes. out the Jahanna video on the labyrinth. And then I had this, uh, I had to talk to you, you know, that was one year ago. I had to talk to you, I had to speak to you, and since then I'm really thankful and I mean, we, I, I, I mean, I'm sure, like, whatever, like, I'm very happy to have met you and to be part of my uh, life, if, even though if it's a virtual so far, uh, but uh, yeah, and uh, so to, to, this is why um, I was I, I was in touch I was in, uh, interested in the story, uh, and and then so we're, for anybody that is listening for anybody that is um, that doesn't know probably we did already like an episode uh, with Louis debating David Miano uh, in the metaverse and if you want to check that out it's like uh, you find it in my channel whatever and uh, it's very, some very some some very interesting points were made by David. So, and uh, I wanted now to have a conversation with you because now I first of all would like you to, I think, so the reason why we're doing this, I think after so many years is that uh, you kind of decided at, at this point to just go public uh, because, but, but you, you're better than me, like telling probably the story first of the Mataha expedition. And what happened in 2008, Luis? What what happened? Like what what's going on? Like, and then later, yeah. we yeah. You go on, go yeah. on. Sorry. Yes, it's it's a, a very big story. Yeah. So first, the story how I finally ended up in Egypt. Um, that took ma many years, and then what happened in Egypt with the with the Mapa expedition, and then surely what happened afterwards. Uh, when we did, I when the scans and all the research uh, results came out, um, and then the, the struggle for for many years to to get it actually, yeah, to continue the project, then it was like a, a, a several years of silence, and now uh, since since a couple of yeah definitely since last year, and also when you 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 came in. And, and, and the other YouTubers who, who started making, how to say, 
new new uh, videos on the project then the interest rose again and uh, ever, ever since yeah it's it's still going on and um, and that's so why it's so great to have like this this this, this discussion today with you uh, on on Hawara okay okay yeah this is uh, also uh, like one of the questions i wanted to to ask is um, uh, like why go public again after so many years and as you were saying probably is because uh, you see the there is an interest in the public that you didn't see uh, back in the times where we didn't have any social media probably that's the reason or you have more reasons yeah definitely because in, in around 2007 i think that was the year facebook started out and then just yeah, early 2008, we, we did the, the Mata expedition and then it, it completely exploded with interest mid-2008 uh, all the way to, to 2009. But that indeed were the early days of social media. And so we, we, we hadn't any, how to say, Facebook page or any mm -hmm. Instagram page or any Twitter page. Yeah. So, so it was all done by, by classic mainstream media and uh, a, a very basic website we made to trying to communicate the information. I think YouTube was around, so we, we made an initial little like tr trailer about the projects that now had like, I think all, all together got, got over a million views. So I had the, the, the one from 2009, so that, that's actually, uh, a, 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 yeah, that went on all the time. But um, the, the main thing why I'm actually now really trying to, 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 to push it forward again is because all these years, um, the, the labyrinth is still, um, how to say, su suffering uh, this degradation of, of uh, the, the salt water. So it means that the, the pyramid is completely submerged. Uh, the salt water is still attacking the stones. So, and this is almost since almost 200 years now, uh, ever since they, they built this water channel and, and started uh, agriculture around the area. Um, so today, more than ever, the labyrinth and surely the, the pyramid itself needs uh, a preservation yeah. project. So, and yeah. mm -hmm. there are many. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. Uh, <laughs> go on. But uh, if you. Um, so no, no, it's, it's fine. The, um, so we have a lot to talk today, and I think we, if we yes. we can all like a little bit uh, with uh, with some order, then we can attack all the topics that we uh, that the audience is probably uh, interested in of, of hearing. So let's start with uh, two thousand and seven or eight and mm -hmm. seven or eight, and then you probably say um, like why like what like what was going on and how did you manage to do that like the expedition. And um, what did you find? Uh, how did the whole thing went? Uh, like, uh, what's the, um, like, I don't know, the dynamic of the whole thing? And then what happened with the Egyptian ministry? Uh, and then what happened with the publications? And then, and then later we can talk about the future of the, of the Hawara. I, I don't know, up to you. Yeah, sure. So going back into time, <coughs> the, the project started way before the, the Mata expedition itself for me. So I think way back uh, when I, in my teens, I was already very interested in, in ancient culture, ancient civilizations, in, in e Egypt, um, and, and also start reading in the 90s um, books of Graham Hancock um, and, and these are type of authors because I was really fascinated by, by these the mysteries around these ancient civilizations and the possibility of them being older and and so on um, and, and that kick-started for me also my, my interest in, in I would say the a a academic uh, history of, of Egypt and, and all the pyramids and, and the pharaohs and, and these mighty civilizations that's yeah um, what were in the past so and it all more or less boiled down to to like a book I received by uh, Athanasius Kircher uh, and, and there there was like a very nice uh, there were very nice depictions of of, of, of ancient buildings and and, and uh, uh, yeah, engravings and and um, and I always wanted to become like an architect or or an, uh, an artist um, 
So that really inspired me. And so for many years, I was uh, very active as a contemporary artist, and, and I still am. Um, and suddenly, this idea started to raise from OK. Um, I was busy with uh, electromagnetic installations and scanning the universe and, and setting up really sophisticated, let's say, equipment to, to, to catch uh, cosmic radi radiation waves from, from deep in, within space and, and translating them into sound and images. And then this, this idea came from maybe why not actually use this type of equipment, but not to, to scan the, the, the universe, but to scan a, a part of the desert that is connected one of, with one of the most enigmatic mysteries of the ancient world. And that was the, the labyrinth of Egypt for me. Yeah. So back in the days, yes. Yeah, no, go, on, go. On. Sorry, uh, but so I wanted to ask you actually, what, what, what sorry, <laughs> um, what was your mindset? Like, what made you the trick? Oh, let's just go to Egypt and do it. Like, what, what triggered you? It was. It came bit, bit by bit because, in essence, um, it was also because at the time, and I definitely had to do with, with this, 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 yeah, enigmatic Mayan calendars that many people and authors were really like making lots of documentaries about it and things like this. And, and suddenly there was like a wave coming uh, of, of people interested suddenly in the, in the labyrinth of Egypt, because the labyrinth of Egypt at that time was very associated with the possible possibility of being like, like a, a big hall of records of this ancient civilization. And so I, I was suddenly not standing alone there anymore with my, my interest in, 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 in the Labyrinth of Egypt. Suddenly there were many people with their own, how to say, interests, um, and uh, some of them very, how to say, scientific, uh, certainly the, the ones of, of the Natural Research Institute of mm -hmm. Astronomy and Geophysics, other ones more f for entertainment purposes, like yeah, documentary makers and so on. And, and, and so, and uh, at a certain po moment, I thought, for yes, le let's just do it for me, because I had nothing to lose in the sense from even if, if I set up this, this very expensive uh, expedition project and I put like lots of effort in it. And even was when there's nothing to find there, for me, it was also fine because for me, it was about the art, about the, the poetry uh, of the ancient uh, sites like Hawara and the desert, mm -hmm. to, just to be able to work on the side next to the pyramid which is mm -hmm. also thousands of years old for me was already like a whole thrill yeah so i was not in or for proving anything or so and that yeah so i was able to combine all these interests in in, in one project mm -hmm. so there were uh, authors who wrote books about uh, also the the labyrinths uh, there were authors uh, people from America who were more into NASA mm -hmm. and, 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 and scanning. Mm -hmm. uh, there were people who were really interested in, in how to say, the, the preservation of the site mm -hmm. because it's since many decades it's suffering from, from erosion yeah. and, and shallow water. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so for people who doesn't know about what you were talking about, just briefly, very briefly, we are talking about a building that Herodotus in 500 BC, when he went to Egypt, this is the first, Herodotus, if you don't know, he was like the first Greek, like the first historian uh, to write about Egypt, uh, n not Egyptian, you know. And uh, when he came to Egypt, yeah, he saw the pyramids, yeah, he spoke with the priests, yeah, he saw the society, but especially when he went to Hawara, uh, he claimed that have you know saw this amazing huge building and uh, if I'm not wrong he was talking about a temple probably so and uh, the building he spoke about being two floors so the ground floor and the what's what Walter what Walter Emery would have called the substructure so just an, an, an underground floor uh, which he, Herodotus, never was able to go uh, visit the underground one because it was uh, not allowed by the priests. But after Herodotus, uh, other historians went uh, to Egypt and they wrote the same things. Like, yes, there is an amazing, unbelievable, huge building, 3,000 chambers, one piece of stone as a, as a roof, and uh, it's just uh, a topic. So. But what happened with uh, with these accounts is that over over like the thousands of years, this building was uh, lost in a way. So what happens in Egypt is that uh, after the Greeks are gone and the Muslim comes over, 
the we can like the Europeans lose uh, a little bit the interest in the in Egypt, and uh, they come back uh, mainly in the 1700s. Uh, they start again to. Uh, with, with the passion of, of Egypt um, and to explore again and, and etc. But over those years, in the Middle Ages, uh, in the in Europe, they a lot of artists, uh, like one one could be you, uh, for example, uh, were inspired by the Labyrinth of Egypt topic. And so, what happened in between um, between the 1700 and uh, when Luis came into Hawara is that Flinders Peter goes there and try to put a final word into the topic so he drills and then he doesn't uh, so, so what he and he finds what uh, he thought would have been the foundations now uh, what Luis has been able to do with in 2008 is to detect with his scientific team that that piece of stone with that huge piece of stone yes perhaps is the foundation of the ground floor but it could probably be the uh, roof structure of the underground chambers. R am I wrong? Like, is that the case? Yeah, that was that was the whole yeah idea to to to, to scan it um, to see if, if if there still are remains because, like you said, Pender Petri was the, the last one uh, and who actually yeah excavated the sites. Uh, until uh, only five meters deep, and then he hit this big, big foundation layer that he had repeated as um, being the foundation, and that the building was built once built on top of it, and that it's completely gone. Um, and one of the yeah ideas was maybe let's have a look underneath this this foundation layer and see what's what's still there, and if there's something there, there's yeah it's we need to yeah reconsider the whole theory. Of Petri, and um, if it's nothing there, then it's yeah the the, the, the whole enigma is solved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think uh, the topic of the excavation and exploration of the labyrinth should be addressed and attacked by actually finding first the stairs that goes down? Yeah, because um, yeah, it's 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 a huge huge building described by, by Herodotus. So there, is, there are no real plans or there's like more description of a an, an giant underground halls with doors that makes uh, awful sounds and, and you, that you can completely lost in the labyrinth. And, and he, he and also the other authors, they describe it as really impressive because Herodotus being a Greek, so he knew all these uh, giant temples in, in, in Greece. He said that all the temples of Greece and all these giant buildings together yeah. wouldn't even equal the, the magnitude of, of the labyrinth. So that's a big statement coming from a Greek. Um, and even he said the, the, the giant pyramids of Giza, the, the, the big pyramids of Giza are, are extremely impressive, but that the labyrinth even surpasses the, the, the pyramids of Giza. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he must be talking about something really big up there. So, mm -hmm. and, and it's described as a labyrinth. So in a sense, that um, because now a labyrinth is associated with something you enter and you follow all the way to the end. Um, but I think he he was like more referring to to the labyrinth as being a maze, mm -hmm. like a, a maze that you get completely lost in, uh, uh, and, mm -hmm. and like a giant. Like yeah, that, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Was definitely also. Ah, sorry, maybe, because there is a little uh, bit of a delay. Go on, sorry. Okay. <laughs> The link with the, the labyrinth of of Greek, Greek uh, like Crete, Crete, because um, it said that Daedalus, the inventor of the architect of the labyrinth of Crete, he first visited the labyrinth of uh, Egypt, and that was his inspiration for building the labyrinth of Greek of Crete. Yeah, the yeah. the, so the uh, yeah. in my uh, I mean. Sorry, uh, the the thing is, um, in my, I think in my background uh, as an architect, I don't know, I have this memory that uh, Greeks were referring to buildings as labyrinth, not because uh, you could lose uh, yourself as a, um, as a spatial mechanism, but just because they're big. So if any building yeah, yeah. is too big, 
they call it labyrinth because it's just enormous. Yes. Uh, but enormous. we we have a concept of labyrinth, which is just this you know a French uh, 17th century gardens where you you know Disneyland. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. But actually, uh, yes. they, yeah. Uh, okay. So what, I have one question. Oh, man, I have many questions, but one of which is um, so. Um, Given the data that you have gathered, you and the scientific team of the uh, National Institute of, of uh, uh, Astrophys Astrophysics or Astronomy, I don't, I don't remember, Astro... Yeah, the, the National Research <laughs> of Astronomy. Astronomy uh, and Geophysics, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, given that data, um, what I was, uh, uh, with my own layman eyes, I could see, uh, first of all, they wrote like black and white, like in, in, it's written there, there are artificial structures there. So I passed, I actually passed the PDF to David Miano. He didn't come back to me yet, but he says, thank you. So like, so that's, that's good. Um, yeah. So he's thank you. He's thanking you. <laughs> um, but um, no, so my question was, uh, was uh, give, given that data, uh, I'm like, what should we expect? to find like because from a from a from an architectural point of view uh i didn't i yet i still haven't studied the middle kingdom uh period i'm studying the old kingdom so i don't know actually about the middle kingdom architecture but what i can tell from the old kingdom uh if you go like uh, in the joser uh substructure of the of the bent pyramid oh, sorry on the step pyramid underneath the step pyramid you have like these five kilometers of tunnels and um, and then you have uh, gallery tombs in Saqqara as well, like these huge galleries, uh, underground galleries. So my question is, what do we, do, what do you think uh, we should expect in an architectural point of view um, whenever we get the labyrinth, the underground floor excavated and explored? Yeah, it's it's a very complex uh, site, uh, the, the Havara because it's called like a necropolis for almost, sorry, I think 4,000 years and more. The whole site was used to, for, for many purposes. So we have definitely the, the pyramid itself, which is built there. Uh, we have uh, the temple complex associated with the labyrinth. Uh, and for o over, yeah, since the last millennia, it's also used as a cemetery and then as a village and then again as a cemetery and then as a village. And they built even yeah churches there, and so it's like a whole yeah mishmash of of of, of things that you can find there. Um, and but if you really try to make the, the the big picture, so we have the, the pyramid itself with a very complex understructure, and that understructure was uh, almost totally mapped out by by Flinders Petrie, because he was able to to get in in uh, 1888. Uh, and later, another time to uh, for, for mapping uh, for mapping it out. So, but he when he came in, it was already partially filled with water, but not at the height that we find it now. So even the the the, 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 the big tomb was was filled with water already. So he was like finding his way through through the mud and and, and so on. So because at that time, the the, the channel which is the artificial artificial channel. It was already running for almost 50 years over the site, uh, and that was already, yeah, definitely affecting uh, the, the underground of the pyramid itself. So w today we aren't able to get in into the the underground of the, the, the pyramid. It's it's completely submerged without mm -hmm. water, and this just due to to a, a simple water channel running over it and and some agriculture activity nearby. Mm -hmm. So th that would be. Well, not a lot of budget immediately to be solved by putting it into like a concrete tube and 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 and, and build like a drainage wall around the, the exactly. site. So, and that would be already like a, a major feat to be able to do so. That's the so one one big topic. The other big topic, of course, is is the mythical labyrinth of, of Egypt itself, because we have so many ancient authors writing about it, referring to it. Uh, all the way to to a Jesuit priest mentioning it in an old text, mentioning that it's like a, a huge underground uh, facility, um, and this matches actually also with with that in the, this whole area, the Fayum, 
there is like a, a big spiritual center missing. All all academics know it that there is like there must be somewhere a big uh, spiritual center um, n- nearby the crocodile po- mm-hmm. not crocodile poles. Mm-hmm. So so they, they know it. Um, so and and it it is not really how to say. Uh, like would be not a, a, a total surprise that we would find something big there and underground and that deep, because th- that's what the Egyptian did for for thousands mm-hmm. of years, and the Fayum was a, an enormously important site, uh, definitely for for the the new kingdom, but way and the old kingdom as well, because they they built giant dam structures. Uh, th- th- there are mention about huge artificial lakes feeding into the Nile. Um, and what m- many people don't really realize is that in the, the old times, all the ships coming from the Mediterranean, they weren't entering through the delta to Cairo, so they came around, um, and there were ma- many channels and, and lakes um, in, in, the, in the area of the Fayum that connected actually the Mediterranean with, with the Nile. Really? So wow. It was also, yes. Yeah, it, so that was a major trade uh, way to get in. To Egypt, so that makes the Lebanon itself an extremely uh, important location for for trade and 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 so on. Yeah. So, so yes. Um, uh, when you, when you were there, I mean, I know you've been there like uh, dozens of times, but there was the, I found that there is this pyramid in the north of. Uh, so basically, in the north of the Hawara pyramid and on the west of the Meidum so it's basically like if you drop a, like a line this this pyramid this small pyramid of Seila have you been able to go there when you were there no no, no. when I, I did visit quite a lot of things but not not yet everything because yeah the, the transport and and, and and also time is always restricted when mm-hmm. I go there Mm-hmm. So yeah. Able, we are not able to. Yeah, we're actually going to talk about this very soon. So, but the the, the thing uh, about yeah. the pyramid of Sel is one what I found out that it, I didn't know is this uh, very small pyramid, uh, it's like 25 meters by 25. Something I don't remember the measures, but more or less, and uh, it's far from the Nile. It's the one of mm-hmm. the furthest away from the Nile, and there is no substructure. There is no chambers. There is nothing. So they fo- they think that it was Huni building it, the father of Snefru. Um, but since it's far from the Nile, one wonders, you know, what what's going on there. So it's definitely a super interesting region that one, the Fayum one that you're talking about, and also the twin pyramids that the famous Lake Moeris twin pyramids that they were supposed to be in the Fayum uh, in Fayum Oasis, and uh, that some people even claim that there are still there some remains. So uh, do you know about them? You you know about the twin pyramids? The, the ones that are in the they used to be in the middle of the lake. Yeah, yeah. These ones. Yeah. Yeah, there there yeah, I think even even Herodotus wrote about it mm-hmm. that there were two pyramids in the middle of the lake with giant statues yeah. on it. But it looks like like some kind of gateway or something where bo- boat and ships could sail through uh, and and reflecting back that it was such a uh, an important passageway to get to 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 Cairo and so on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the the old the old uh, the old uh, I'd say center of Egypt. Yeah. Then, um, yeah, I, I, I think that's one of the reasons why. why and also, the, the the lake itself was used to be lots lots bigger than it uh, yeah. is today. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's very is is an area that is so fascinating. Unfortunately, now it's a little bit uh, difficult uh, as an area, right? To, as to excavate or to get permissions to to excavate and things like this. Uh, uh, as you as you were mentioning. Yeah, definitely, because there are, I think there are two things massively changed, and that's the the way arche- archaeology is done today. Because in the past, you you, you every explorer with some dynamite. And and, and, and and a pickaxe, he, he, he could just do and, and whatever he wanted. Yeah. If he got the the, uh, yeah, the approval of some local chiefs. Um, but now, archaeology is, is a very sophisticated, scientific uh, discipline, um, which you need to have like lots of expertise for and, and lots of permissions to mm-hmm. do so. And the other one is that the, the, the site in the past, there was nobody there. Uh, there was almost no no people living in Egypt, like uh, 
like in the Fayum, and now we have like and the Fayum, it's 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 a, a very populated area with over eight million people, mm -hmm. almost ten million people living closely next to like a, a major archaeological site. Mm -hmm. So and, the, and 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 it's a very poor region. So so that means that if you start to do something there. You always have to think security yeah. for 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 the archaeological site as well that yeah. they don't steal things uh, and and uh, and so on. So yeah. Um, uh I would like to. I don't know. Again, I don't want to put you in a difficult uh, in a difficult uh, position, which I'm not gonna do. Uh, but uh, I have to ask you a question, uh, which uh, will uh, be like. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be like. A, it's definitely a question that any conspiracy people or alternative history, whatever those kind, that that community, let's say. Um, yeah. which I, I used to belong in a way because uh, I was so much intrigued by any any of those mysteries and stuff. But I, I think like that community uh, needs a little bit of an answer in regards of what happened with the Ministry of, uh, of Antiquity. What happened with Zahia Was, Luis? Yeah, you have Zahia Was and, and, and the Ministry of Antiquities. He, he was at the time Secretary General of the Ministry of Antiquities. So, um, so the, the thing was as soon as our research uh, was done and published and presented at uh, Ghent University and also in, at the NRG IG itself in, in, in Helwan to, to the official group of, how to say, the, 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 the Council of Antiquities, which are 48, I suppose, very important people, <coughs> all, all very, all Egy Egyptologists and, and, and specialist experts. So the information was shared, uh, but then, of course, uh, normally follows the, the public release of the discovery, and that's done by the Supreme Council of Antiquities, and that at that time, normally it's done by Zahi Hawass. Um, but the thing is, that didn't happen. So, uh, and in contrast to, to many other expeditions, this one got like an enormous amount of attention even way before we started uh, digging and so there was like a giant push from behind to, to, to for for the people to, to know what's actually there and what the conclusion was was there something there or was not there because um yeah for so many decades yeah mainstream archaeology said yeah there's nothing there based on the conclusions of, of Fender's pet mm -hmm. and our research completely disapproved that they, they said yes there are things there huge things there so but of course that created a lot of tensions um and the the the, the minister of antiquities didn't uh came up with a, an official release um mm -hmm. so the thing is but that um, the, the the reason why it was always so so hard so in interesting because in the beginning I thought yes they 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 they're doing it because yeah they don't they don't want us to know um, which is still a possibility the other one was said okay if they release a, a big uh, how to say uh, this big re yeah discovery or re the results that something is there and uh, still there that that it might create too many, I let's say, bad interests from, from local people starting to dig at night and so on and, and, and so on, uh, creating a lot of extra security and stress on, on, on an already overstressed uh, site. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, um, you have the, the, the reason that they also wanted to renovate it, or I'd say, preserve it themselves. So they said, yes, we know that something is there. Uh, we don't know. We, we don't want too man, much attention, um, and and we are gonna proceed with this project ourselves. In the sense that this, that's what they also communicated to me. So yes, we we are gonna proceed it ourselves. So we are gonna set up a, like a big drainage project and, and start a preservation, and we're gonna do it very soon. But two years later, not, nothing happened, and now we are almost like I don't know, over ten years later, um, and nothing happened. I remember you um, after all this um, 
after all of this, I remember you did a, like a second application in 2019, right? Is it right? The, the, the site was actually flooded by applications, not only by us. So as soon that um, we had this discovery done, we said the whole idea was we, we go for another application. Yeah, so we went for another application, um, but then just before we were able to actually apply, there was already uh, an application by the University of Cairo. And so they went in 2009 and they did actually more or less the same that we did, like uh, the, the scanning of the labyrinth, uh, not, not with so much uh, tools and, and, and smaller, but they completely confirmed what we uh, scanned. And they even they um, did some extra uh, specifications. But they were also able to already, how to say, do some board drillings and, 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 and see how, how deep the, the foundation and how see the, the mother rock was situated. They also were able to do some cleanup works, like cleaning up the pyramid itself and, and, and do some, how to say, initial preservation works. But that ex expedition was completely and abruptly uh, stopped also by the Ministry of Antiquities. Um, for for, uh, for me, unknown reasons. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was yeah proceeded by, by Zahi Awas, and the man who was responsible for this expedition was uh, Alaidin Shaheen, and that was he was at the time the head of the faculty of archaeology at the University of, of Cairo, and he was even put into jail for a couple of days. So I don't know what the reason was, but that was and that happened. He was uh, put in on jail for 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 what for the Hawara yeah, topic? Yeah, so it's a, for 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 the related to the to the Hawara project. Yes, yeah. So and he was a very and still is a very respectable man. And he was also uh, first in place to become the new uh, head of the Ministry of, of Antiquities. So when we had the revolution in two thousand eleven, and Zahia was was actually uh, put away. Uh, because he had too many links with, with, with uh, Mubarak, the, the president, the, uh, the dictator. So he was put away. Um, and then this man, Aladdin Shaheen, Shada Shaheen, he became minister of antiquities. Because just before that, um, yeah, we had the revolution, Zahi Hawass made himself minister of antiquities. So, he, like a whole, its own ministry actually mm -hmm. th that didn't exist before, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, Zahi was had to flee actually to the, uh, the Americas, mm -hmm. to the United States, and then this Shaheen, Aladdin Shaheen, who was put in jail by Zahi was, uh, he became uh, minister of antiquities, which was very expensive. And at, at that time, I thought, okay, no, the, the project is really going to roll. No, we. we but then again, after three months, um, when, when, the, the, when how to say the, the military uh, general became yeah in charge, he was again uh, put off, and and ever since, yeah, it's like uh, like an off and going of, mm -hmm. of people there, uh, which created a very unstable situation to 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 apply for permissions. Mm -hmm. uh, but now now we have another. Later, uh, ah, sorry, go on, go on, go on. Yeah, l later, so many years later, um, with, with uh, again, many people co coming together and say, okay, let's let's uh, another time go for it. And, and uh, we were able to find like a sponsor and, and there was some interest by National Geographic to, to also be involved and so on and, and making a documentary. And so I said, okay, and, and we had like a, a cultural heritage consultant, very high established person in, 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 this, in, the, in the world of archaeology. And, um, and she, that was from Kalkun, Bram, she yeah. was able to, to yeah, form a, a team and, and invite all the, the best experts on, in, in the world, literally. Um, so we set up like a, a very expert team with people involving University, Cari, University College London, the, the, Unif the Freie University of, of Berlin. We got also people from the University of T Turin. Mm -hmm. um, so we got like a a very sophisticated team there, um, also very high-tech um, companies involved. So, and and then we applied for it, 
um, one, one time uh, uh, and the whole file completely disappeared. In which yeah. year? When? This was, I suppose, we started working on it on uh, 2015, I started working on it. Right. I think two years later, okay. 2017, we were a able to really put the whole file okay. down. Okay. So I, I actually had like um, an office in Cairo for almost two years mm -hmm. uh, working on it. The Office of Past Preservers and a very professional team um, um, that, yeah, that's very mm -hmm. established there and, and knows many people. <coughs> and, and so they were able to compile and, and, and the contact all the experts. And then we put yeah. it forward, I think, in 2017. It completely disappeared after a couple of months, the whole file, which was around 50 centimeters pile of, of paper and, and documents and, and, and CVs and, and everything. And the whole Hawara master plan um, preservation uh, project that we actually all compiled from how to actually preserve the whole site. Mm -hmm. And then um, we put it forward another time and then I was invited to go to, to Egypt. Mm -hmm. To uh, to present the, the projects, and I thought yes, it, the whole Ministry of Antiquities will be present. Very official uh, mm -hmm. meeting. The Ministry ministers of Antiquities will also be present. So we got the the, the amazing and very important uh, Egyptian sponsors involved. Um, so it felt really rolling. Um, and uh, so I arrived there and I was also uh, accompanied by, by one of the, the, the main persons of the Belgian uh, embassy, the, the deputy there, uh, to, to assist in, in, in this meeting. And I came in and I was like a, a giant surprise for me because suddenly there was an Italian person standing there, the new uh, scientific um, Italian deputy, Atashi, uh, because in my team, I had the Italian attaché. I had him. He was in my team. He was like a very professional uh, scanner and he, with, with a very good team of scanners from the, uh, the Polygon University of Turin. Pretty, yeah. and, and a couple of weeks before, he, he said, yeah, I lost this position. Um, there's, an, uh, yeah, for some uncertain reason, he didn't know. But then I was standing there, suddenly the new Italian attaché was standing there. And, and he made like a, a, an enormous presentation, extremely detailed. Um, he, he took over almost all information uh, that we did in, over the years with the National Research Institute, all the, the, the mapping and all the plans and all, everything. And, and he came up with actually a copy of our uh, presentation, our Hawara master plan. So he presented that to the, the Ministry of Antiquities. And then he said, yeah, I have already a direct deal with the Minister uh, of, uh, of Antiquities. Um, so, and the whole project will be funded by UNESCO. Well, uh, so perhaps that's uh, sorry. That's how they do it uh, in the tech uh, industry as well. They fake it until they make it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so I was completely, completely stunned, surprised. I was sitting there. I thought, "Well, what is this?" So this man comes out of no nowhere. For for almost all these years, there was no interest in in, in Hawara whatsoever uh, and suddenly this this guy came up he had a, a, a direct deal with the ministers um, and, as, and and so he, he put it forward so he said now the only thing that he did they needed to wait is for um, how to say the, 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 the money to come from UNESCO mm -hmm. but I knew people from UNESCO I, I met some even by coincidence in, uh, in, in Cordoba and they said yeah Havara side is not UNIF UNESCO protected so the chance that UNESCO is going to, to sponsor is, is non-existing. So, but for so many months, we the project yeah, waited to, uh, for, because we were not able to move forward because of, of this, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, th this thing. Uh, he also s claimed very explicitly that when this, the, the, the preservation project will be done, there will be no, no foreign uh, teams allowed to, to participate. So no University Cairo, no, no University College London, no Berlin, no Berlin, even not Italians. So only completely Egyptian. So, but then so many months later, it was said that uh, 
there was no money coming, so the whole project was actually ditched. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had uh, Professor and, and Dr. Um, uh, Geoffrey Tatsi from the University College uh, London. He, he is um, like a, a professional archaeologist, but a field director. So he is like he he did really many many expeditions in Egypt, and and he is like one of at that time the, the best and and the most re reputed uh, diggers uh, in, uh, in 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 Egypt because many people when they do like an expedition. They, they are they might be the director of the project but you need like a field director who knows to do uh, digging and, and excavations so he, he was like the best um, and then a couple of weeks um, b before he, he went again to Egypt he called me and he said yes I, I know how we are going to do it now um, I, 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 will, I will be able to get it back on track again uh, everything will be fine I spoke with many people, many people are okay with going for it. Um, he, he knew where the obstructions were, uh, and so he, he left. And three days later, Bram Kalkun called me and said, yeah, they found him dead in, in a taxi in Cairo. Yeah, so that actually more or less killed the whole project. So, so everything needed to be restarted from, from zero again. So he, he, it was a very strange death. So it might be natural um, heart attack. Uh, so yeah, it, it, there was never an option after even the family asked for, for many months to get his body back into England and so on. So there was no uh, option. And finally he was ashed, cremated and sent back to England. So. Yeah, he, he, he takes like the uh, how to say the the secret with him, if if there is a secret or not. Maybe he just yeah died mm -hmm. uh, uh, very unfortunately in in, a, in the taxi in in, in Cairo. Um, but ever since yeah, the project actually was stopped. So we we don't know what happened with uh, all, all the, the the documents. I was never contacted again by Egypt, mm -hmm. um, and also myself after actually almost like I think yeah, 12, 15 years now yeah, uh, working it on so intensely. I said yeah, now, now I need like a, a break. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was very yeah st a stressful period. For because sure. it involved also like forty eight experts and flying weekly For almost sure. from 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 Spain to to. To Poland yeah. and, and to England and, and so on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is why I um, I was actually had a, like w talking to you like uh, some time ago. I was actually, uh, are you sure you want to go public again? Like, why uh, risking? Because you are risking in a way. You're because what are you? I mean, I, I don't want to say like you're risk, but the thing is, you going public again uh, after uh, all this topic caused you so much. Uh, pain in a way um, yes but it's it's also like a very it's still my, my passion yeah. um, and and just yeah first you have this this pyramid which is standing there it's not just like a, a ghost or something it's like a massive thing which mm -hmm. is standing there it has a, a, an enormous complicated understructure uh, which is completely yeah, submerged so nobody can enter it for for a in essence, a ridiculous reason that can be done in a couple of weeks, like like putting just a, a drainage in, system, in a pipe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, drainage system, and all the research, not only by the University of, I uh, have of, uh, I'd say, not only by the National Research of, of Astronomy, but also of University of Cairo, and later satellite scans, which were also done. Yeah, they all indicate that this pyramid is effectively connected. To, to a labyrinth side, mm -hmm. to an underground mm -hmm. channel. Mm -hmm. And that was exactly what Herodotus and the, some other authors also wrote about, that the pyramid is in essence connected underground by a channel to the labyrinth area. Mm -hmm. um, and that appeared also on our, on our uh, scan results. So the big question is, uh, and if we are able, ever able to get into the pyramid itself, mm -hmm. are we then able to find like a stairs Connection to to the the yeah, the labyrinth 
uh, inner structure. Yeah, because uh, you either, like, uh, the entrance of the labyrinth must be either in the subterranean, um, in the substructure of the pyramid, so that must be the entrance, or, uh, or it's subside, <laughs> or it's from the ground floor, but it's, um, yes. The, the, the big thing mm -hmm. is as well, yeah, no, 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 is that so? My initial intake was to see if this foundation layer that Petri discovered, which is situated around five meters below ground and covers like I don't know, like eight or ten football fields, um, if this foundation layer was the roof of the existing labyrinth or maybe just the floor. Um, of one of the the buildings, no, for um, sure. But Luis, for yeah. sure, we know that that it's. Uh, like, I mean, Peter knew what he was talking about. I, I, he, like, whenever you know he wrote something. So I think that's. I I would believe him when he said like that's the foundation. But probably that's the foundation of yeah. the ground floor, uh, of the of the you know. Yes, yeah. But um, because there was another part, another floor, like uh, an underground structure, and an above. Floor. Exactly, exactly. So I thought maybe that's that's just the, mm -hmm. the floor of the ground floor mm -hmm. and and yeah when when the the, the 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 geophysical studies came back that they said okay the mother rock is situated around 80 meters deep over the side. So it means mm -hmm. that at 80 meters deep is rock. The the really massive rock starts. So everything above is more or less yeah, I have to say, not not massive rock. Yeah. Um, so soft. The soft. The, the, the soft. So the scans themselves, they they pointed out that there are structures below eight meters. Yeah. So that means that underneath this uh, foundation layer, let's say that uh, that Petri uh, discovered, there's something there. Yeah. That yeah. There's something there. The big question was also from I never thought there there were things way deeper like mm -hmm. Dick picked mm -hmm. out of, of the, the mother rock and and so there were and, and that, that's where we come into like a very controversial field here so um there was a, a satellite uh, scan mm -hmm. done um in 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 2015 mm -hmm. yeah by the americans um no? so the thing is is it's it's also com complicated there because the the thing is at a certain moment uh, we were busy writing a book mm -hmm. on the labyrinth because I thought, yeah, I'm, 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 mm -hmm. yeah we, we had all these issues and I'm just going to write a book on the labyrinth because there is no book written on the labyrinth, like a full overview of the history and, and everything what happened and so on, um, even going back to Belsoni and all yeah. the, the famous guys. Uh, so, so and, and, and with all the pictures of Anatolius Suskir here inside, and, and so, so mm -hmm. the, of, the, of the, the expedition of Napoleon, because also Napoleon was in search of it and so on, um, and I was going to compile everything. And that uh, triggered the attention of, of this documentary maker, Carmen Goldsch, yeah. uh, from Canada. Mm -hmm. Canada and she, okay. she, she, yeah, she said, yeah, the book is interesting, but a documentary is even more interesting. But uh, but at that time there was no mentioning about starting up uh, an, an, another expedition or so. Just uh, mm -hmm. um, and then she she brought in um, some let's say satellite scan technology, which I was always very doubtful about. So I thought, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know the credibility of these scans or so. Yeah. Um, and so so we we my, my partner there. Um, he he actually was able to to fund the this this the scanning, yeah. It was pretty expensive, and um, and he 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 actually paid for it, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, in his own name, and uh, because he w we were going to co publish this book, and his name is uh, and Andrew Barker, and um, and he thought yeah it's nice maybe it brings in some interesting new views maybe new some new scanning images or so and, and so this this thing went completely ballistic because the scanners themselves suddenly they, they found an enormous structures but way below the 20 meter line so everything that they actually scanned was just way mm -hmm. way deeper mm -hmm. they, they came out with giant underground halls and an enormous yeah. network of tunnels and so on yeah. and so we went to Egypt uh, just to have 
a talk with, with with the people there and 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 see what 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 the expert thought about the, the scans that we had and 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 uh, Carmen Bolter assisted us or our, our, our team actually because she was part of the team um, and in essence she was also trying to find money for making a documentary and so on and then we came back uh, in Spain she 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 flew to back to Canada and just a, a week later without how to say yeah, talking about us or agreeing, she co went completely for it on her own. So she suddenly launched uh, big claims about the discovery of giant structures uh, at, at Hawara, and, and she made like very nice uh, visuals mm -hmm. of the, these 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 um, interpretations actually of of the the, the scans I saw, and which were very vague, and and the 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 buildings that she actually. I'd say made into a visualization. Yeah, it's, it's it terrible. Very, very solid. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, and so we as a team completely distanced ourselves from, mm -hmm. from Carmen Bolton mm -hmm. because yeah, she actually burned uh, the, the whole the credibility. Satellites and the credibility. So we were not able to continue working because also she she, she went completely on her own uh, to our co complete surprise because yeah and, and as she started claiming uh, this this huge discovery and so on okay she, she worked for many years in Egypt and and she she had visions uh, as because she was talking about yeah her past life memories of the labyrinth and so on she was very mm -hmm, yeah. spiritual woman who made some really fascinating documentaries like um, the the pyramid code mm -hmm, I saw which is uh, yeah it's a very fascinating well-made documentary uh, but that, that was her choice, so she went on with mm -hmm. this thing, and, and, and we went our own way um, mm -hmm. with, with, with the current heritage consultant mm -hmm. and so on. Um, then the same partner, Andrew Barker, he, 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 because he came from a very sophisticated tech background, yeah, in, involved with, with yeah, the launching of the first um, portable computers and so on, so he had like a, a very yeah serious background in, in, in tech um, so he was fascinated by, by the labyrinth uh, has his satellite scan technology so he was able to 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 actually relate to a, a new um, satellite uh, scan company um, which was actually were all former military persons yeah so because the satellite scan technology is is actually uh, a recently more co uh, yeah it's, it's coming out of the military complex and the, the people who used to work on these these things uh, they started yeah going civic in the sense that they were able to yeah. Yeah, do scans for for yeah, civilians mm -hmm. as well <coughs> so it's it's coming from the the military industrial complex so so yeah to, to uh, in essence to scan underground military yeah. structures and bunkers and, and see what's down there, mm -hmm. and apparently there are quite some satellites flying over the, the the Earth, which are able to use cosmic waves and 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 see what reflects back, mm -hmm. and, and this way they can go and see deep in, into the underground. So so he actually paid for another uh, sophisticated uh, satellite scan, and and completely independent. He didn't mm -hmm. show any results of the former scan which I was very skeptic about mm -hmm. uh, and they came actually with more or less the same um, results mm -hmm. so they, they completely skipped the first 20 meters because they say it's like rubble but compared to what's way mm -hmm. deeper mm -hmm. because from almost yeah, 18 20 meters deep mm -hmm. again huge structures huge halls huge huge uh, Corridors, okay, um, and they actually again said it's like multi-layered. So we have like a, mm -hmm. a layer at twenty meters mm -hmm. deep, we have layer at forty meters deep, and, and yeah. we have eighty meters deep. So that was and, makes and, people and uh, dreaming about a possible lost civilization um, uh, a monument or something, right? Yeah. So it makes the, the question was, yeah, were they all made at the same time? 
or where they yeah. live like how to say it's like in Paris uh, yeah. you have the metro system mm -hmm. the system the, the newer metro system is underneath the catacombs and <laughs> and, 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 okay. and Paris so the catacombs are not the deepest so yeah. the, the, the the younger ones mm. are the deeper so yeah. maybe first the first layer of minus 20 is the oldest and the one that 40 and 80 are, are even younger so it's it's a, it's it's uncertain yeah and it's so actually it's totally in the capabilities of the ancient egyptians uh doing something like that yeah. because yes. uh, and, that and we have it in joser pyramid so uh, we have it yes and, and and that's what also we showed it uh to to how to say the uh the experts of the university Co college london and they said yeah we, we see many things that you need to be like very knowledgeable about to to recognize them so they saw like a moat around the, the site which was yeah, only recently they said yeah there was a moat around the sakara complex this also persian tomb shafts they were recognizing many many things that if if you're just like a scanner yeah you, you wouldn't make up Mm -hmm. um, how reliable uh, is that technology, uh, Luis? How li how reliable is those actually, scans? For, for me, um, actually, I don't know. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm e extremely s skeptic because the thing is, the claims are big, and mm -hmm. we had already. I don't I don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. It's it's military. Uh, it was a very expensive. Um, it's it's like I also was sitting on an airplane towards uh, Cairo, flying from 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 Istanbul, and and in a very strange way there was sitting a, a man next to me. He, he was, a, a, yeah, he worked for a, a private military company, um, and and he was actually explaining the whole technology to me, and and he was saying that his his company actually was the the originating company. So he, and, and, and he said, yeah, this technology is actually coming from our technology because you are like a neck connected group with 27,000 people working. Um, and, and he explained to me also that they can like seismic research from an airplane so they can even like fly over an area and, and do seismic from mm -hmm. an airplane, which is pretty impressive. So and that he said also that yeah, the technology is far way advanced than 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 that people know yeah uh, and, and 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 so we were dealing with this type of contacts and mm -hmm. and, and so on so i'm 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 still have to say if if there's some place in the world which th this can be there it's it's the labyrinth of egypt because ancient authors there, there is a lot of mm -hmm. there, there, they say that where there's a lot of smoke there's fire yeah. so ancient authors write about it yeah. uh, not on the even emperors um yeah yeah, yeah, yeah for sure for sure uh, but uh, so far so it's like the it's like the scan pyramids project uh, they they come they do the scans and then they see look there must there should be like we detected an anomaly this is what uh, they detected and then after now we have the confirmation of the north face corridor in the pyramids of Giza. but until you actually excavate it's like david mian until you actually excavate you don't know uh, what's there and if it's there so at the moment, what yeah, we that, have is anomalies, uh, big anomalies, anomalies. and uh, and yeah, historical yes, reports. Anomalies. So yeah, and it's report. it's already it's already something. It's already something. So I wanted to ask you. Uh, we are in about uh, one hour already, more or less, uh, and I think is uh, I think it's around a good time yeah. to kind of uh, close it up and to to have a little bit of a final question, if you if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the future? For, for Hawara. So the future, because you said indeed, from, from, my, from my point of view, is there are lots of, it's, there are, it's lots of smoke, in the sense there is lots of, it's, it's one of the most enigmatic locations in, in the world, it's in Egypt, it's in a Fayum, yeah. we, we have the, these ancient altars, we, we have like, like a place that is actually in some miraculous way for the last 200 years unable to be excavated. Uh, there are many projects that really wanted to, to make it happen. All of them were un un unsuccessful in, in all kinds of ways. So, but the, the main thing that we would like to do is just do like a board drilling. We, we drill like non-intrusive astrology. So we drill a, a fine, fine hole 
all the way deep to, to these halls or underground structures, uh, the, the claimed ones. Um, and then if, if we read something, then we can drop in like a, mm -hmm. a camera, label scanners, and but just see the situation is up there. And then maybe because the tech is so, the, the drones are so sophisticated that they can actually find a way out yes. uh, and, and, and locate like... But first we need to drain the water out, right? The, in essence, it's not even necessary because the water is shallow water. It's it's just the the, the first five five meters. Yeah, the, the the reason why the the water in the pyramid is way higher is because it's like it functions like a wick, like a, a candle wick. It just sucks up the water in, into the into the the mud okay. wick. So that's mm -hmm. the reason why the, the the level inside the pyramid is way higher mm -hmm. than the level of the water mm -hmm. of. of of the the, mm -hmm. the the channel mm -hmm. because the, the, the pyramid sucks, sucks the water it. up uh, yeah so and even uh, if you drill deeper to, to minus 15 there is no water there it's the water comes in mm -hmm. and uh, and it evaporates up it it, 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 it doesn't reach the uh, the depths of, of minus and, 20 meters. and what uh, are you planning to do another application then or I, i'm not i'm not going to to do it on my own because also I'm, I'm just an, an artist with with a, a huge fascination for it. I, I'm just a, a nobody actually. I'm, I'm not yeah. an archaeologist. I'm not You're an outsider. I'm even not a scanner. An outsider. I'm just an outsider, and and, and I'm I'm really comfortable with that concept. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm this crazy artist. Yeah. But so I, I just would like to raise an interest, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the whole idea is also. Because we, we we designed this NFT collection together, yeah. like a beautiful collection of of, um, of NFTs, uh, Egyptian amulets, and the whole thing is raise interest, create create some funding with it, mm -hmm. create even more interest by making like a, a very nice visual uh, presentation, mm -hmm. and then actually from there on try to 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 bring in new new people. And, 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 and then see how, how far we can go with it. Yeah, exactly. So one thing I wanted to say to to announce uh, today with you, it was the NFT collection as well. So yeah. if uh, if um, so if anybody would like to support uh, the cause of, of the mission, uh, obviously at this point, the mission, uh, as you might uh, find out, it's a little still a, a little bit uh, in a gray like situation, let's say in a gray area in a way so what we are looking for what Luis is looking for and, and me as well like we're doing this <laughs> a little bit together now it's to raise a little bit of funds through the NFT collection so you can find the NFT collection under Costco Foundation in OpenSea you can there are 12 Egyptian amulets and there are 1111 um, amulets per uh, type so it's like we have like over 12,000 uh, NFTs and if you like, uh, I don't know now, the, the price of Ethereum must be like super low, so it's just cheaper than it was uh, when we launched it like three uh, months ago. That's a way to participate. So the, and the, the money that, so the money that, um, the, the, the funds will go to the Costco Foundation, it's the Luis uh, Foundation, uh, which is a natural foundation. So it's like by status, the status of the foundation is, you know, it's, it's, it's a foundation. It is not a profitable uh, thing. Uh, so with those funds, we were planning and thinking about a documentary and then basically raise awareness and uh, build up the momentum. And also, uh, one thing that we were thinking uh, since uh, we, were, uh, we, were in, we were in contact with Johanna, with Johanna James is also Luis could uh, just drop by Johanna next, uh, in the next month or so and reach a bigger audience because my audience like Egyptian feeling is what it is. Okay? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, I hope uh, I hope this will be enough uh, at the moment because it doesn't look like that we can do much. And we actually, it's time for Egypt to take care of itself. Like, like we have so like, we have two hundred years of westerns coming over, uh, and you know, I, I'm I'm reading now the archaeological uh, uh, the the book of uh, Chris Naunton, You know, the notebook of archaeologists. Uh, and you, it's it's Western uh, uh, history, the Egyptology history. So now it's pretty much since the 60s, more or less, the, of the last century, 
Egypt is becoming more Egyptian, like uh, the, the archaeology of Egypt is becoming more Egyptian. And so if, I think it's probably like we what we can do as Westerns, um, it's build up the momentum and not uh, interfere too much uh, with the locals um, and help them if they want help. This is what we want. So uh, because uh, uh, you proved that you've been super brave to do what you did and super patient and super passionate and super, like all of the possible positive <laughs> uh, attributes to a person and we i'm super like uh, yeah i mean thankful or whatever for, for what you did uh, but i think it's time for us to just step uh, not back but step to the side and help them if they want help because uh, it causes you so much trouble and so much um, you know so at this point we want <laughs> to see what's there we actually want it excavated but we want to do it ourselves and uh, if we can help we can help with a little bit of money from the nfts and things like this i think <laughs> yeah definitely it's uh it's it's the, the egyptians they have a lot of weight there historic um because it's a very small small country with enormous amount of, of cultures and in essence, it's, yeah, it's yeah, our common world heritage. It's like mm -hmm, yeah. heritage of humanity. So I, I feel really like obliged and pledged to 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 help Type. them out with, with this bearing this 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 enormous yeah. Um, task. Yeah, 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 yeah. I also, I mean, I I agree with you. This is a cultural, a common humanity, humanity cultural uh, site for sure, and it needs to be in the UNESCO. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if the lab, it doesn't matter what we find down there. Um, it matters even just the pyramid of Amenemhat the third. Like it's unbelievable the burial chamber that is there, just out of this planet. Like you, gotta, it's impossible. What Petri drawing his drawings? of the, ch the, ch the chamber, just for people who doesn't know, the chamber of that pyramid, the main one, there are many, but the main one, it's done, it's like seven meters by five, something like that, and it's all one piece of stone. It's carved, the chamber is carved in the block. <laughs> it's just crazy. <laughs> and it's yeah, like... It's, it's a megalith, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. by hyperlit. <laughs> if there is a, like, so yeah, uh, just that pyramid on its own deserves all the UNESCO um, preservation attention. So I think, Luis, uh, if you're satisfied, we could wrap it up. Uh, unless you had something else you want to share with us, uh, up to you. Yeah, I to, to do way more uh, with you. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't get it. It was a, a delay. Sorry. Can you say it again? I found it a very fascinating discussion, and I'm looking forward to to do way more of those. Uh, ah, you want to do more? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, let's do every six months, and we we can do the updates on the mission and see where we are. That's maybe. Nice. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Well, Louise, I'm was thank you for 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 sharing your uh, experience uh, today. It, it's something that I want. I really wanted to 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 uh, to you know. I already have because you already thought about it with me. But uh, I'm 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 happy you opened up to uh, to the public again with the subject, and uh, I hope you're so, happy as well. <laughs> yeah. Many thanks, and I will also maybe mention that if people are interested in NFTs, then they can go to 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 my website Costco one, and there there is a link to to the NFT collection. Yeah. So um, there is way more uh, information there to be found on the labyrinth the result uh, documents um, other links to videos and, and so on yeah exactly go check it out costco dot uh, costco dot one right one. yeah yes. and then yes. uh, the scientific report from uh, the national research institute for astrophysics and geophysics from <laughs> it's there so that's the yes. that yes. is there so yeah i think that's it like uh, we can have our easter time i think <laughs> Uh, we're gonna have eat it. some chocolate eggs. Eh? Yeah, I actually don't have them. I still have to buy them. <laughs> you have them, eh? You Belgian. <laughs> yeah, they are somewhere in the garden there. Yeah. Mm. Ah, you have? Oh, wow. But you actually have real rabbits in the garden, right? Or you don't? Yeah, it's chocolate. I'm still a Belgian, eh? So yeah, chocolate. yeah. Very you don't have beer. You don't. You drink beer or you don't? Uh, More uh, local wine. Yeah. Local wine. Okay. 
because Belgium is good for beers as well. But yeah, since you're in Spain now, it's like, look, I'm coming. Eh? Give me, okay. give me some time. I cash up, I cash, uh, cash okay. in, and then I come visit you. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. So uh, okay, so we're gonna soon. see. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, we can end the stream here, and we can talk. Right. <laughs> okay. See ya. Ah, okay. Thank you okay. for the guys.